Hello and welcome to my vehicle sniping guide. This guide aims to help you learn systematically how to snipe your opponents out of any moving vehicle. This includes ground vehicles such as cars or bikes and flying vehicles such as helis, oppressors, planes and jets. All the information I provide you with in this video is based on my personal experience as a vehicle sniper. I have been doing vehicle sniping for more than a year now and I'm convinced that my way of doing and practicing it is very effective. The guide is divided into four different parts. As you can see on the screen, I will start off by going through my preferred settings for vehicle sniping. The second and the third part of the video will revolve around how to improve your tracking and are called basic tracking and advanced tracking. In the end, I will talk about the topic leading which is all about the question, how much do you have to aim in front? I highly recommend that you watch all parts and that you watch them in order because they build on one another. Anyway, let's get started. Settings. In total, there are three settings that impact sniping in first person. And ironically, each of them starts with the words third person. I discovered that the first person settings do not have an influence on first person sniping at all for some reason. Anyway, the first and most important setting for vehicle sniping is the third person aim look dead zone. In order to be able to track any kind of movement as precisely as possible, you urgently need to use a very low third person dead zone. Ideally it should be zero from the bottom. But if your controller suffers from stick drift, for example, you may as well go for 2 to 4 points from the bottom. Anything higher than 4 will make it very difficult for you to aim, however. The second setting is the third person aiming sensitivity, which is totally up to you. Some players prefer playing on a lower sensitivity, others prefer using a higher one. What matters is that you are able to cope with the sensitivity you choose and get used to it as quickly as possible. The same goes for the third setting, which is the third person aim look acceleration. Generally speaking, it is better to have a high sensitivity, but if it's too high for you, just lower it as much as you need. Here are the settings that I have been using for vehicle sniping for the past six months. My third person aiming sensitivity is 4 from the top, my third person dead zone is 2 from the bottom and my third person acceleration is 2 from the top. The next topic is basic tracking. Tracking in general means the ability to follow your targets with your sniper scope as precisely as possible, no matter in which direction or at what speed they are moving. By basic tracking I mean being able to track your targets mainly by using your right stick, but without zooming too much. As you can see in this example, I zoomed in at first, but then I fully focused on tracking my target by using my right stick. Notice that I never used my left stick to move around while I was aiming. To practice this, I highly recommend that you do the following exercise. Get on a rooftop and try to snipe NPC cars that are moving the same way as I was sniping the jet in the clip I just showed. The best places to do this, in my opinion, are Krastenberg and Opium, two buildings near LSIA. Zoom in as much as you need and shoot at the NPCs while tracking them with your right stick as precisely as possible. Another good exercise would be to do the same, but without shooting, so basically you fully focus on tracking the NPC cars, but you do not snipe them. Now let's move on to advanced tracking. Advanced tracking is a term that I came up with that should mean that you track your targets not only by using your right stick, but also by zooming in and out regularly. Using your D-pad to zoom is very important for vehicle sniping because it makes tracking targets that alter their travel speed and direction a lot easier. For example, if your opponent is coming closer to you at a very fast speed, you urgently need to zoom out quickly to be able to keep him or her in your scope. Also, if you realize that your opponent is moving too fast for you in general, feel free to zoom out a bit so you can keep up with his or her speed. In order to get used to zooming in and out regularly, try and get used to playing left-hand claw. 
This means that you fully release the left stick and instead you keep your left thumb on the down button and your left index finger on the top button. And this is what it should look like on the PS4 controller. But it might be different with some other controllers, I'm not sure, where you might have to use your thumb for zooming in and out at the same time. Anyway, if you want to practice advanced tracking, get on Krasenberg or Opium again and snipe multiple NPC cars one after another, as shown in this clip. As you can see, I literally spam the zoom function because it helps me control my aim when I'm switching targets. It doesn't matter if you miss your shots, just keep practicing so you get a good feel for your controller and also for your settings. Another way of getting used to zooming would be to practice with a friend. Ask your friend to circle around you with his or her oppressor so you can practice tracking it as precisely as possible. As this clip shows, especially if the oppressor is moving at a very fast speed, it will be necessary to spam zoom in and out to adjust your aim. Before we move on to leading, one more important note. Always try and practice tracking and zooming from as many different ranges and angles as possible. For example, you should consider switching the rooftop to practice sniping NPC cars after some time. Furthermore, don't just practice aiming in one direction, e.g. from left to right, but also from right to left and in any other direction to maximize your control with the sniper. Finally, leading is also a very crucial topic when it comes to vehicle sniping. Leading means calculating the exact travel time of your bullets to know exactly how much you have to shoot in front. This is often but not always the case when you're sniping vehicles. In total there are three factors that determine whether and how much you have to lead your shots so you hit your target. The most obvious one is speed. The faster the vehicle moves, the more you have to lead your shot. Compare the two following clips and you'll see the difference between sniping fast moving and slowly moving hydras. Although the sniping range was about the same, I had to pre-aim the Hydra that was moving faster a lot more. Next, it is important to look at the distance between you and your opponent. The further away he or she is from you, the more you have to lead. Again, compare the following two clips and you'll notice the difference between long range and short range jet snipes. The last factor is direction. It makes a huge difference whether they move directly towards or away from you, or they pass you from left to right or from right to left. If they fly directly at you or away from you, you have to lead far less than when they pass you laterally. The following two clips showcase this very well. All these factors have a joint influence on how much you have to lead your shots, so keep them in mind. However, note that knowing exactly how much to lead comes with time and experience and by watching other people. It is also an advantage to know about the distinct physics of the vehicles in the game, but going through those would make this video way longer than it already is. One thing you can do to find out more about it yourself is that you use thermal vision. Thermal vision enables you to see the sparks of your bullets if they hit the vehicle directly. Anyway, I hope that this guide will help you learn and improve at vehicle sniping, or at least that you've learned something new. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or DM me on PSN. Thank you for watching and peace out.